Hello friends and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we are going to understand the Linux directory structure. All files in Linux are related to one another. The file system is a collection of all these related files organized in a hierarchical structure. In the file hierarchy structure, all files and directories appear under the root directory forward slash. Most of these directories exist in all Unix operating systems. Let us have a look at some of the common and the most important directories in Linux. The Linux directory structure is like an inverted tree and on the top we have the root directory which is denoted by a forward slash. Every single file and directory starts from the root directory. Every file apart from the root itself must have a parent and it should be possible to trace the ultimate parentage of a file to root. Note that only root user has the right to write under this directory. Also, forward slash root is root user's home directory which is not the same as forward slash. Let us have a look at the root directory on our system to make things more clear. To make things more clear, I am using a graphical user interface. So let's go to the file system. By default, we are at the root directory. As you can see, the name is forward slash, which is the root directory. Also have a look at the root directory which is under the forward slash directory. It is the root user's home directory. A home directory is the primary repository of a user's file, including that of user's configuration file and it is usually the directory in which a user finds itself when it logs into a system. Home directories for users other than the root are by default created in the home directory, which is another standard subdirectory of the root directory. Now let us have a look at another directory which is the bin directory. The bin directory is where you will find binary files or executable files. As you all know, programs are written in human readable source codes which are then compiled into machine readable binaries which comprises of zeros and ones. Commonly used Linux commands are found here. Let's have a look at the bin folder on a system. You can see that we have the commonly used commands such as the cat command, cp command, etc. Next come the etc directory. The etc contains configuration files required by all programs. That is, it contains the file required by a program to run successfully. Let us have a look at what etc has. As you can see, there are various folders of programs and these folders contain the configuration files required for the programs to run. Next, let us look at the home directory. The home directory is where user home directories are. Linux system is a multi-user system. For every user, there will be a different home directory. So, the home directory is where one can separate one's data from another account's data. We can store anything in our home directory like documents, music files, etc. Let's see what's there in my home directory by default. As you can see, documents, downloads, music, 
pictures etc are there in my home directory now let us see the opt directory the opt directory is where additional third party softwares are located that is the softwares which are not preloaded in the operating system if you have not installed any third party software the opt folder will be empty as you can see my opt folder is empty as there are no third party softwares that i have installed next comes the temp directory temp directory contains temporary files created by systems and users files under this directory are deleted when the system is rebooted so one can store temporary files in the temp directory the slash usr or the user directory is where user related programs are the var directory contains log files apart from the directories we have seen there are other several top level directories on a linux system for example the boot directory contains the bootloader files the dev contains device files the lib contains libraries essential for the binaries the media contains mount points for removable media such as cd roms mnt contains temporary mount directory where system admins can mount file systems the sbin directory contains essential system binaries which are used by system administrator SRV contains site specific data server served by the system such as data and script for web servers and the PROC contains information about system process so that's all for this video for any doubts or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching